Good afternoon, friends of Grace Lutheran Church. Pastor Paul Luter with you here on this beautiful Wednesday. I say beautiful because I'm not much for winter weather and that isn't uh, there right now. Um, I'm sitting in my office at church where I have nearby the mask that I've been wearing today and the hand sanitizer that I've been using today and the Diet Coke that is in a bag over there so you didn't have to see it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm at it today and I am glad that you are with me. One announcement for you uh, to be aware of next Wednesday. So the 17th of June at 6.30 p.m. in the West parking lot we're going to hold an impromptu uh, parking lot service. And uh, at this service, uh, I invite you to uh, bring your cars, obviously. And if you want to stay in your cars, that's fine. If you want to bring lawn chairs, that's fine. We'll ask that you physically distance. Uh, we also uh, will have communion and we found a way to do that that's safe and um, healthy. Uh, in these days, worship, there's a lot of things about worship that people are saying that you can't do. And so we won't do those things, but we will do the things that we can, which includes hearing God's word and being present together and praying for God's continued strength and guidance of us and for us in these days, in this really long day that has lasted from March until who knows when. This long, one long day. What day is it? It's the same day every day. And I wonder if, uh, as I was thinking about today, I wonder if any of you are feeling a little worn out by it all. And I don't just mean like tired. I mean like just restless and agitated and, and um, uh, not sure uh, who to be mad at or what to do with the things that are going on inside of you. Certainly it would be understandable if you felt that way. And certainly the longer that this goes on, the more like there seems there's no resolution in sight. Uh, it's a little frustrating for sure. And a little depressing and a little, um, it causes no little bit of fear and just anxiety uh, for people and for families and for communities of faith. It can feel like nothing is going on. And so we're not sure what to do. So today I wanted to read for you a familiar psalm. But I want to tell you why I'm going to read it before I read it. This psalm is a psalm of trust and a psalm of hope that people have read for generations, really, since it was written. This is where this is a place where the community could go to be reminded that they are not alone, to be reminded that they are held in the hands of a gracious and merciful God. And to know that whatever is to come, God is with us. This psalm is Psalm 23. And the psalm before it uh, has a portion in it that says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's a lament. And it's words that Jesus speaks from the cross. He borrows from Psalm 22. People forget, though, that lament isn't just about complaint. It is also about hope, not just about despair. It is also about hope. So Psalm 22, 22 and 23 belong together. They are bookends where Psalm 22 begins in despair. Psalm 23 ends in hope. So you might feel right now a whole bunch of things that I can't even begin to imagine. But I want us to keep our eyes um, 
in those places and in those ways that hope is springing forth among us. And so I want to read this psalm. And then, as musicians do with material, they riff on it. So I'm going to riff on Psalm 23 a little bit. And then I'm going to send you on your way with a prayer. So if you have a Bible and it's handy, or if you know this psalm by heart, say this with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. What did you hear in those words? Hope might not be the word that you would use. Maybe you'd say that the psalmist seemed pretty convinced that though there are things going on, that, that God is there with us. And I think that's true. I think that's certainly true in this psalm among many others. But I wonder, I wonder what happens if we take this not just um, at the psalmist's word, but if we imagine in our own lives where we are now, whatever we're facing, whatever we're dealing with now, and trying to imagine that these words that the psalmist has written are words that are written on our hearts. And they're words that we can draw from to find the comfort, strength, and hope that we need in the face of under the sun these days. Once again, we are still in pandemic time which, and I must tell you, I'm a child of the 80s, and so please forgive me when I uh, compare pandemic time to what MC Hammer called hammer time. That might be before some of your time, maybe, but it is a time that is unnerving and confusing, and what do we do and what can we do and what can't we do and why can't we do anything and why aren't things moving fast enough and why oh why oh why do, do we need to not gather when everybody else seems to be gathering at malls and grocery stores and gas stations and hardware stores and now starting today, restaurants, not just outside seating, but now it's possible restaurants are starting to slowly, um, to slowly uh, be in a position where they're starting to open their doors a bit. Why, oh why, oh why? Nobody's been, th nobody under the age of 100 has been through a pandemic before. Nobody has. And so everybody's trying to be really cautious and careful, concerned um, for the vulnerable among us. Do you know that the word vulnerable comes from a word that means wound? Uh, caring for those who are wounded, who need, um, who need our care and concern in these days. Still, what do we do? Our congregation is working on uh, putting together a smart team. We, we've in fact formed it and we'll meet together sometime early next week. And what we'll do in that team is start to develop policies and procedures and guidelines for when we can come back 
and how do we come back in ways that are safe and healthy and in ways that um, still meet the need uh, that people rightly have to worship God uh, in uh, some semblance of community. In Psalm 23, God is providing. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Everything the psalmist needs, can imagine needing, can even not imagine needing, God promises to bring and God promises to give and God promises to walk alongside of us even when the pandemic or anything else just gets us down, causes us great uh, consternation and sadness. So where are you today? What are the things that play inside of you that cause you pain and hurt and frustration and anger? What are those things? Because it is there, it is there that God promises to be hands outstretched full to the brim of what you need not what you want but what you need not always discernible by the human eye but even in hidden ways God is present one of my favorite passage parts of this psalm is where uh, uh, a table is set before the psalmist in the presence of their enemies <laughs> and I assume that if the enemies are present whoever the enemies are <coughs> excuse me if the enemies are present there might be Ludafisk but there's also good things at that table things that remind us of God's grace and mercy and love dear friends I understand and I share with you all the frustrations that many of you have voiced privately or aloud, not just to me, but to others. This is a hard time. And I'd like to tell you that pastors are somehow immune from feeling tired and frustrated in the midst of all of this. But the truth is we all are tired and frustrated. All of us, each and every last one of us. Even my five-year-old who declared to me the other day, Daddy, I'm done. I'm done with this. Let's go. So then we had to talk about that. Know that in this time, God holds you and loves you and cares about you. And God hears your cry. Let us pray. Bring us beside still waters, O oh God. Restore our soul. If we are in a moment where we are uh, walking in the valley of the shadow of death, help us to fear no evil, for you are with us. Set that table before us, and not just us, but others as well, so that we can share together in a feast that has no end. Thank you for your ever-present, ever-flowing love and care for us and for the world, for the sake of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. God bless and keep you.